Hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. In this video, we have to actually cover a model of meiosis. And in this case, we're going to talk about a model made with Play-Doh. But before we start, I want to quickly go over the actual benefits and sort of the problems when it comes to models or any type of analogy or whatever you want to use because you you actually might get a question which says what are the benefits and what are the limitations of models. Some of the benefits would be for example that models allow like for example when you're using a Play-Doh it allows you to have a hands-on approach, hands-on approach to learning and we have many people who really appreciate that hands-on approach. They feel that they can really understand the content a lot better if they have their, if they just work with the actual idea. And also that you can just visualize them much better. So you just have that opportunity to visualize as well. And it can also simplify, sometimes a, comp a complex idea can simplify it and make it so much easier to, to understand as well if you use a, a model. So simplify is another one. Now these were some of the benefits. Some of the limitations, there are some limitations as well. Some limitations, it could oversimplify. So it could oversimplify. And one of the examples would be when it comes to meiosis, because you always you usually deal with maybe you know one one set of chromosomes, maybe two set of chromosomes. You don't usually have all twenty three sets of chromosomes. So if you just use these models, you might sometimes think, okay, well, there's only two sets of chromosomes that we deal with. Whereas in our own body, we have obviously have twenty three sets. So just using the models means we sometimes we can miss the complexity, so we can miss the detail. So oversimplification means we can miss the detail on occasions. And that missing the details can be quite a problem. Or also it can just enforce misconceptions. So sometimes we might you know, like an analogy, but there might be parts which fit the actual concept, that analogy or that model, but other parts don't. And yeah, those misconceptions could be entrenched if we have no way of making sure that those misconceptions aren't there. So these are some of the limitations and some of the benefits. And uh, this is just a very simple type of model you'll do in class. And again, you might be doing this type of model, you might be doing it slightly different. But just imagine these were made out of Play-Doh. So I don't know how to spell Play-Doh, Play-Doh, hopefully that's right. Um, but so just imagine these were made out of Play-Doh and we have to do a couple different things. So I'll read the actual point. It says, students will process information from secondary sources to construct a model that demonstrates meiosis and the process of crossing over segregation of chromosomes and the production of haploid gametes. So I'm going to go through all of it except for meiosis itself. So all the individual steps, you know how we have metaphase, anaphase, prophase, and all different phases. And just to keep it simple, I'm just going to go over the other parts, the crossing over, segregation of chromosomes, and the production of haploid gametes. That's what I'm going to go over. And also how we can go from chromosomes and duplicate them. And I'll keep it relatively simple. But you might also go and model meiosis in class as well. So for the, to begin with, we're going to have our chromosomes. And remember, I mentioned that if they're not dividing, chromosomes are actually in this random noodle-like shape. And we call that noodle-like shape chromatin. And the reason why they're in that shape is because we can copy those information from genes much easier if they're in that shape. You can imagine uh, there might be a gene here, there might be a gene here, there might be a gene here. And it's going to be a lot easier to copy that if they were in this form, as opposed to if they're really condensed. Now, there might be a gene right in the middle somewhere, and it'd be hard to get to if it's in that condensed form. So if they're in this condensed chromosome form, it's only doing cell division, so doing either mitosis or meiosis. If it's just normal everyday function, we have it in the chromatin form. So first thing it's going to do, it's going to wind itself up into this chromosome form, and we're going to have two identical ones. Remember these were the homologous pairs. Homologous pairs. That just means that each of these chromosomes code have the same genes on them. So if there's a gene here that codes for hair color, there's also a gene on the same one here that also codes for hair color. This might mean this one codes for blonde hair color. This might have a blonde allele. This one might have a brown allele. But they code for the same stuff, these pairs. Now we have 23 of these pairs. And we only got, in your model, you might only be working with one of the pairs. But in reality, humans have 23 of these pairs. 
happens first is we duplicate. So what you might do in your in the actual prac is you just you would add another one. So you have this was was one half here, was one half here, same as this one, and then you added a second one, and you had a different color thing in the middle. This is the thing that holds it together, and it's called your centrosome. Centrosome just holds it together. Now we have duplicate both of them. We duplicate each individual one. And then we have something called crossing over that occurs. And remember crossing over, you, you might just, what you do in your class, you might just bring them close together. Uh, why did that not work? Um, you might just bring them close together. And you say, well, okay, now this part has crossed over. So this part of this chromosome is now going to be blue. And then the same part of the other chromosome is going to be red. I wonder if this works. Let's see what happens when you move it back. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so this is now blue, and then the same part of the other one was now red. And that happened because of crossing over. All right, so we've done okay so far. We've just gone through the process of crossing over. We've modeled that. We modeled parts of steps of meiosis. So, for example, the duplication step. That was also parts of the meiosis. That was crossing over here. Now we just have to do the segregation of chromosomes. The segregation of chromosomes, what happens here is they will break apart. So you can now just mention they'll break apart. So imagine they'll all break apart. And then what we have left over is this here. This was segregation. Now we have them all separate. So this was these original ones. Now we've just split them into two. Now we have four separate chromosomes. So these were the original chromosomes here, these ones. Except for now, there's parts of them are crossed over, and we have four of them. And the reason why is because we're going to make four sperms. So out of this original egg, we're going to have four sperms. And each of them are going to have half the number of chromosomes. That's what we call them haploids. So it says model the production of haploid gametes. Remember haploid? This meant half. So half the original amounts. So originally, they had one of each of these. And now we're going to have half of it, so we're going to have one each of each, one each as opposed to both of them. So this one might go into sperm number one. Oops, <laughs> the sperm is too small for the chromosome to fit. But I just imagine it were to fit perfectly. And you're going to have this one go into this one. You're going to go and have this one go into this one. You're going to have this one go into the other one. And this has happened now. We've just done it for one chromosome pair. And again, imagine we do the same thing for 23. You might not do that for 23 in your model. You might just have a couple of pairs. But then at the end, you know, you might have a different pair. I'm just going to use a different color. Um, say green here. And then you have a bit of a green one, which might have bits of a yellow one. And you might have a yellow one in here. These are you know, different. These were the next chromosome pair. Maybe a green and a yellow pair. And then you might have for the last one, you might have a yellow one with a bit of green attached to it. Okay, just imagine this happens now for every single chromosome pair. And in the end, you have your sperm. So this might be a sperm or it might be egg because they're both gametes. And then we have our sperms, which again, they have the half the number of chromosomes that we originally had. Originally, we had 46 chromosomes, which means that 23 of these pairs. Now we have 23 individual chromosomes. We have no more pairs. And this was just the whole idea of, of meiosis. We just did this whole diagram here, just with a model. You would be doing this with clay in your class. So I'll go over the one again. You need to be able to model, construct a model of meiosis, which was just you know, the, the duplication, crossing over, segregation, and then the production of gametes. And you see it says, and the process of crossing over the segregation of chromosomes and the production of haploid gametes. Also know what benefits of, of models are and what are the pitfalls, limitations of models are. If you know all that, you should be good. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.